Hey guys, this is my DeWalt 12 volt cordless drill. This is model number DW927. This drill has to be about 20 years old now. It's, it's been around for quite a while. It has never let me down once. This battery on the other hand has let me down. I don't know how many batteries I've been through with these NICAD batteries and my last go around I even purchased the genuine XRP I believe it is, which is supposed to be the higher capacity uh, DeWalt battery. And it doesn't really give a milliamp hour rating on the battery, so I don't know what kind of cells are in it. Once again, like any NICAD battery, after you use it for a while, it is completely dead. It won't hold a charge. When you charge it up, it self-discharges. It doesn't last long, and I'm getting tired of swapping these out constantly to recharge them during a project. Uh, so rather than purchasing a new drill, I'm going to see if I can open up this battery and rebuild it using lithium cells. So to open this battery up you'll need a T10 security torx bit. And a security torx just means there is a little hole in the end. It's also called a tamper proof torx. And with all the screws removed you should be able to take the lid off. And remove the batteries. And we'll peel back this heat shrink carefully just to see what's underneath. I don't see any markings whatsoever on them to identify what kind of cell they are. And with all the tape removed you can see the spot welds on the cells. Um, there are 10 cells here. Uh, NICAD cells are commonly 1.2 volts. Uh, so 1.2 volts at 10 cells gives you your 12 volt battery pack. So I want to go through these and see if I can find which one is bad. I'm expecting to find one or more cells at 0 volts. So there's 1.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 0.41, 0.42, 0.43, 0.
Uh, I can't fit two of the same cells in because they either hit the support over here or the support over here. So I'm just going to use these little plastic spacer things I harvested out of old 18650 battery packs. And make sure that the polarities are reversed so I have the negative and the positive up. And just tape them together with a little piece of captain tape. And as you tape them together, just make sure the two ends are even. Um, and I'll do the same with the other two. So I'm going to place them in the enclosure and mark off where I want to place them. So I'm just going to put a little line with the Sharpie here. And I know that that's where this end. All right, now I'm going to line them up such that no two polarities are next to each other. So you see we have positive, negative, positive, negative. And I'll insert my plastic spacers. So I lined it up with my previously drawn mark. And once again, I will secure it with captain tape. And if you did that right, your battery pack will fit into your holder perfectly. Now to get this battery wired up, I will be using this standard 0.15 millimeter nickel strip. And since this is a high current application, I'll actually be putting two layers of nickel strip just to double the amount of current carrying capacity and reduce the amount of resistance it creates. So I completed the spot welding of this battery pack. Uh, I started with the main positive and I just wired all four cells in series which will give me the nominal 12 volt battery pack <clears throat> over here to the main negative. Um, and I welded these two tabs on here. That way this will give me a surface to solder to without having to solder directly to the cell itself. Now on the original battery pack, I'm also going to need to save this connector on the top here. Okay. Uh, now I don't need this cell this is connected to. Uh, but I do need to be very careful not to damage these two contacts as I remove this because I will need to solder uh, my negative lead to these contacts. Okay. Now this is the BMS I chose to work with. Uh, this is a 4S BMS for lithium iron phosphate batteries. And on the back you can see it is rated for 40 amps and it does confirm lithium iron phosphate. So the way you wire this BMS is you have a 0 volt terminal that goes to your main negative and then a 14.4 volt terminal that goes to your main positive. You then have two smaller terminals which go to the first series connection and the second series connection. And then you have a pair of positive and negative terminals that go out to your charger or appliance. So the way this works is the positive and negative come in these two terminals and they come out these two terminals. That's why these two terminals are slightly larger than these two balance leads. So I'm going to start here by soldering on the output positive and negative. Now ultimately these wires probably should have been fished through the holes in the board, but uh, I did want 12 gauge wire because it is slightly thicker, and unfortunately 12 gauge wire would not fit through these holes. Um, 14 gauge might have fit, but I didn't have any 14 gauge silicone on hand. And I'm trying to do this side a little better than I did the first two connections. Uh, I fished about half of the strands through the hole, and then I just wrapped the remaining strands over the top. Um, and because there are going to be wires resting directly against these cells, even though they have cardboard insulation, I'm going to put one wrapping of this PET tape around it. PET tape is insulative high temperature tape. Alright guys, so I got the BMS wiring completed. Um, this is nowhere near as clean as I would have wanted it to come out, but uh, I do think it came out pretty well. So I did make a mistake earlier. 
I mentioned there being uh, two series connections, there is actually three series connections. So you have the 0 volt, the 3.6 volt, the 7.2 volt, the 10.8 volt, and then the final 4.8.4 volts. Um, so you just start at the most negative and you work your way up the chain uh, where each connection goes. So the last step here is to solder on to our original connector. Uh, now when you're doing this step you have to keep in mind that this battery is now live so you can't accidentally short this out. You don't want any mistakes with this. So first I want to remove the old conductor that's on here. And we'll attach our positive wire to the original positive terminal. Uh, this is going to be a little tricky because I don't want to melt this plastic. So I'm going to try to tin this wire first a little bit. And then heat it up just enough for it to stick. And then I need to solder the negative terminal to this little tab that sticks out here. All right, and with that being done, the last part is to uh, mount this connector back in this enclosure here. But uh, when we took this apart, this cell was holding this connector at the top of this enclosure. And unfortunately, we don't have it anymore. So the only way I can think of to make this work and to stay up there is to epoxy this into place. Um, I'd really prefer not to glue anything, but I don't see any other way to make this happen and hold this in place. So I'm going to go mix up some epoxy and I'll set this into place. And hopefully tomorrow will be hardened and we can finally test it out. Alright, it's been two days uh, since this epoxy has been sitting here. It should be hardened up and good to go. So put our battery in our case here. And the lid fits on nicely. So going to put our screws back in. All right, now before I try it in the drill, uh, I just want to double check that I both have voltage and have the polarities correct. The battery on the right is the old NICAD and the battery on the left is a replaced. All right, so on the older battery, the lower terminal is positive. And that's correct on the new battery as well. And you can see I'm at 13.3 volts. Uh, the rebuilt battery is definitely substantially lighter with those lithium iron phosphate cells. Nowhere near as heavy as the NICAD. So, there we go. And uh, just a quick test, I got two pieces of 2x6 here. Some 3 inch screws. That feels fantastic. Of course, I won't know the true power of it. I won't know how much it heats up, if it can withstand the amps or anything like that until I go to do a full project. But from this quick test here, yeah, this is working fantastic. Now in the two days while I was waiting for that glue to set up, I did make note of a couple of things. On these old batteries, if you remove the cardboard sleeve, there is a model number printed on the cell directly and it says 1700. So I'm going to assume that this is a 1700 milliamp hour cell. That being said, uh, my 1350 milliamp cell is less than these ones, so I'm not expecting the new battery to last as long as the old battery. But with how degraded these ones were, this should still be a substantial improvement. Yeah, I have a project coming up tomorrow where I'll need to use this, and I will definitely post the results of that. And I'll try charging this later too, but charging shouldn't be a problem either. Uh, considering the voltage is lying near perfect with 12 volt battery pack, and there's a huge tolerance with these cells. The maximum charge on these are 4.1 volts per cell. Um, now again, I wouldn't go anywhere near that, but you still have quite a bit of room to work with. So once I know if this battery works out well, I'm gonna rebuild this one as well. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave any comments or questions you may have below. Thanks for watching.